it's North Dakota, the Badlands. Okay, eight votes. Secret agenda chooses North Dakota. <laughs> I like North Dakota. All right, I think we're good. I think that's pretty definitive. So here we go. What did I have for lunch? I'll tell you exactly what I had for lunch build. I had pasticcio. That's what's left of my pasticcio. I had a bowl of Cheerios with special protein something or other. It's like protein Cheerios and Crispix. And uh, I had water. And uh, when I take my break, which will be about um, 40 minutes from now, 35, 40 minutes from now, I will get some water and I will probably um, get like a, uh, I don't know, a piece of chocolate or something like that. And I think there's some, uh, there's some, I have some salad, a bowl of salad that I need to eat too. So, so that's what we're looking at. Okay, so let's see. We're going to go north in just a second. Let me just fix something on the YouTube. Hold on. This is again a recording of the concert from last night. So I'm just trying to skip past. I'm just trying to focus on the music. All right, here we go. So we're going north. He made a mistake. Okay, you were on a broken plain covered by rocks, low red shrubs, and large black burnt patches. You accidentally brush against one of the shrubs. It explodes violently, leaving a large burnt patch on the ground and burning your spacesuit. Lose one armor point. Now. Here we go. So, blam. You avoid the shrubs. To the north, west, and south, you can see rolling grass-covered plains. To the east is a forest. Will you go north? So, continuing to go north. Will you go west, south, which is the direction you came from, or east? Oh, no problem, man. Oh, well, I beg your pardon, gentlemen. I had blackened grouper and munier sauce with a wild field green salad. I had something, a little soupçon of something to clean the palate. And then after that, I went to my restroom and gave the restroom attendant, of course there always is one, several dollars to help that man enjoy his day as I took care of my toilet. <laughs> no problem, Wonders. That's close, except it's supposed to be minus, not equals. Hold on, hold on. He's got to do minus. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. Hold up on the pole. Wait, wait, wait. He's got he's to do minus instead of equals. So let him redo it. It'll just be poll dash open instead of equals open. There it is. There you go. Cool. Now you guys can vote. This is like this really extended section in the middle of this. I totally forgot. It's like it's like the guy ran out of things to write about inside a spaceship. He's like, let me just have this whole middle section vignette of like this part where we're on a planet. All right, so we got some north, we got some west. What do we got here? We've got two votes north. We got, uh, let's see, four votes for west. We've got uh, zero for south, one, two votes for east. 
We got another vote. We got five votes for West. Interesting. Interesting. So we've got five votes for West. All right. All right. So I'll leave it open for just a little longer. Go ahead and make your... Uh, go ahead and make your decision. You got to make a decision. You want to get down to the river? I see. Gotcha. Okay. All right. And there we go. Five votes for West. That's what we're going to do. Okay. So we're going to go to the West. You were on a grass covered plain, which continues to the South, but to the East. I know, right? Exactly. Wonders. But to the East develops into a broken scrubby wasteland. That's where you just came from. To the North is a forest and in the West, some low hills rise. Lego, please roll one die. Just roll one die and let tell me what the number. I basically want to see if it's even or odd. So roll one die if you would, please, Lego. And then after that, we'll figure out the poll. But first, you have to roll one die, it's asking. Okay, so it's odd. All right, that's fine. Nothing happens. So are you guys going to go north towards the forest, west towards the low hills, south, um, uh, which is just part of the plane, just continuing, the plane goes on to the south, and to the east is where you came from. So north towards the forest, west towards the hills, south just continuing on the plane. It's not continuing, but it's just plains to the south, or back east, which is the direction you came from. Yeah, exactly, Bill. No. As it turned out, not so much. So let Lego set up the pole. I have this feeling that what it feels like what you guys are doing it's this is fine I think it's a good idea in a way but it feels like you guys are like this you're like west 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 and then you're like north west 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 like eventually you're gonna make everything right you're like north 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 you're like you're like you know looping it's like the best search party system ever are you okay with your vote secret if you want to change your vote, secret agenda, you can or you can leave it. Just let me know and I'll I'll calculate it when I uh, close the poll. Looks like a lot. It looks like Chad is very firmly in favor of going to the West. All right, I'd say that's pretty definitive. You just love to feel the setting sun on your faces, yeah. All right, West it is. Okay. You climb into the midst of some low rolling hills surrounded by a flat sea of grass. Do you wish to explore the hills or leave the hills? This is a simple one. Explore the hills or leave some hills? Okay, cool. So what do you want to do? Do you want to explore the hills or leave the hills? You're actually Lewis and Clark together, because you're one person. So you're you're Clewis, you're Lark, you're Clewis. It is. It's like lovely rolling. Everyone likes rolling hills. 
Like, it's the same, it's the opposite of the escort quest, right? Does anybody not like rolling hills? I don't mean mountains. I don't mean, like, where some people may not, like, want to do mountain climbing. That's fine. But nice, light rolling hills and grass. Everyone likes rolling hills, right? You can sled on rolling hills. It's, like, really comfortable and calm. You know what I'm saying? Ten votes to explore. I'd say that's pretty definitive, yep. Okay, so explore it is. In a shallow dell, you come across a small village of hemispherical adobe huts formed in a ring. In the center of this ring, you can see a totem pole. There is no movement or sign of life other than a few improbable-looking chickens scratching in the dust. Do you wish to have a closer look at this village or leave? So, closer look at the village or leave. Now we need to calm it down. We need to... Oh, yeah. know all this stuff. Oh, yeah. know all this stuff. So, the next song is not on our first album. It's possibly going to be on our second album. Could be. Possibly, I Could don't know. Could be. There is definitely a possibility of that. Anyway, it's from Final Fantasy X. Yeah. It's called yeah. Calm Before the Storm. Yes, I do, Brucible. It is Super Guitar Bros. Actually, what you're hearing right now is their live concert, but it's Super Guitar Bros. Um, and actually, let me find that quickly. They actually are on Twitch. Sorry. Yeah, they're the ones who did a show... Yeah, Sir Brucible, they were on my channel as part of day one of ARFCON. They did a live set. This music you hear right now was the live set they did yesterday for us. Space Drive, the prime directive forbids us from interfering. Joey immediately chooses the option. <laughs> exactly. It's like when Star Trek, when Kirk is like, I would rather die than violate the prime directive. Five minutes later. Look, you give him a phaser, you punch him, you tell him about the ship in the sky. Well, neither is anybody else. What's up, Top? Yeah, man. Seven votes for closer look. Two votes for leave. Okay, anyone else? I'll leave this open for just a minute longer, and then we'll get, then we'll move on here. And programming note: in about fifteen minutes, we will have a ten to fifteen minute break, and then we'll be back onto it. And at around seven p.m., seven p.m. as a programming note, we may have a very special musical guest. I'm not going to know until then because it depends until on how. Uh, things go with them. Um, it's actually a group that is doing a show tonight, and they would be doing this specially for us beforehand. So um, that's unusual. I, having played a number of shows myself, it would be difficult uh, sometimes to get that done. So, you know, I'd love, I hope it'll happen, but I can't guarantee. Exactly. He had a different prime directive. Hopefully you'll get some of that back today, Wonders. It's too bad about your ISP, though, man. That sucks. Random choice for me. Okay, closer look it is. When you are within 50 meters of the nearest hut, a loud hubbub starts up as you see this. I have a picture for you, chat. I'm going to show you what that picture is. Give me a second, I'm going to get the image up. I really want to get this picture. Thank you, Lego. I really want to get this picture. What's up, Dorgo? This is when they did Diablo. Do -do. Diablo's so good, man, this music. Do -do. Do -do. Do -do. I 
I can't believe they don't have this image. Come on, man. This image is so good. Man. All right, let me try one other thing. I'm not always able to get the uh the pictures, but That's too bad. All right. That's okay then. I'm looking up well, I was looking up this particular picture. It's all right though. It's okay. So, here's what we've got, guys. A loud hubbub starts up as you see this. Can you guys see that? That's what you guys see. About 20 aliens looking like fierce little Easter eggs with bushes of hair come streaming out of the village toward you. As the aliens near, a higher pitched chanting and wailing starts up from an unseen source in the village. Will you stand fast, open fire on them, or flee? So here's these guys, these things running at you. You don't know what they're running at you for, good or bad. Will you stand fast, open fire, or flee? What's it going to be? Stand fast, open fire, or flee? Wait for the up hole. So you have no idea. Open fire. No, it would be actually firing on them. You have no idea. They may not be. You have no idea if they're hostile or not. They may not be hostile. So you have no idea. So stand fast, or... Stand in the place where you live. Yeah, uh, wonders the. Uh, I, I yesterday I announced that the board game plans had fallen through because a couple of people that were supposed to come do it had canceled, and I didn't want to. You know, I didn't want to take a chance on pulling in people that I wasn't sure if they were going to arrive or if they were going to be comfortable with the streaming part of it and everything. So rather than do that, I just decided to do the Fighting Fantasy Marathon. A lot of people had wanted me to do one of these marathons anyway, so I thought that I would just do that. And as it turned out, if I can get this group on for the musical guest tonight, that would be cool, especially after a super active day yesterday yesterday with lots of guests and all that stuff so I ended up uh, I, I, I made sure that it was a more likely thing that I wouldn't have any problem getting this done you know as opposed to something that had all kinds of tech issues or whatever else so okay that's fine Lego that's fine someone will stand in for you while you're gone All right, let's check out that poll. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, no problem. No problem. I'm proud of you guys. I'm proud of you guys. I, I know a lot of guys that I know a lot of people that would have been playing this that would have been like, no, kill them, kill them with fire. You're taking a stand against Furbies. Exactly. All right, here we go. So, you are overwhelmed and immediately slaughtered. No, I'm just kidding. That's not what happens. Um, the aliens halt their rush two meters or so from you. I'll show you what they do by using Dragon Spear. They go like this. And then they stop. Form into a wide column and begin a complicated shuffling dance. While another group of aliens, apparently singing, shuffle slowly out of the village. 
After the dance, they lead you into the center of the village where a couple of obviously very important creatures officially welcome you in front of the totem pole. The pole is made of wood, but is topped by something obviously not of their manufacture, a small black square indented with a large red button. In fact, it looks very similar to the small black square with a red button that you already possess. Would you like to come into possession of this device? So chat, do you wish to come into possession of this device or not? Okay, so go ahead and make that vote. <laughs> like all good gamers, you're like, hell yes, I want the thing. Nice, 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 alright. I'd say that's pretty unanimous. Okay, so you would like to come into possession of the device. Now, what it says is, do you have the matching piece of this device? And the answer, of course, is that you do have the matching piece. Opening your pack, you clasp the matching part and raise it above your head, shouting, See? And I'm going to do this with my special effects. It's Brother Returns! Thunder sounds. The amazed aliens collapse to the ground and begin wailing. Raising one of the chiefs up, you convince him via sign language that he should give the part via on the totem pole to you. When he understands, he signals to a younger alien who climbs the pole and returns with the part, which the chief then presents to you. The two pieces plug together to form a black oblong with two red buttons. Once the two pieces are together, they begin to hum, and one edge lights up with the legend, Pan-Dimensional Homing Device, Emergencies Only. Pan-Dimensional Homing Device, Emergencies Only. Hold on a second here. There we go. Pan dimensional homing device. All right, you guys have a pan dimensional homing device. All right. Well, whatever that is, you guys have got it. Nice job. <laughs> okay. All right. Only problem with doing this concert over again is that all the banter in between I'm trying to skip past. Hi, guys. Okay, here we go. Oh, and ask them the way to Broadway. <laughs> okay. The creatures form a crush around you and lead you off to the south, singing and dancing all the while. After a number of kilo... And as they're going along with you, by the way, this is what they're singing. Yub, yub. Ba, ba, da, da, da. Da, dun, da, 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 da. Da, da, dun, da, da, da. Dun, da, 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 da. Yub, yub. Dun, da, da, da. Just kidding. I'm just saying, I could see them singing that. Anyway, um, after a number of kilometers, you leave the hills and cross a grass-covered plain, arriving eventually at a pier in a river. The aliens make it obvious that they want you to have one of the sturdy-looking canoes tethered there. Will you take one of the canoes and paddle downstream, or decline their offer and leave the tribe by foot? Yeah, exactly. So, what's it going to be, guys? Are you going to take the canoe? Canoe or not canoe? Yup, yup. There you go, Wonders. Yup. I was hoping someone was going to get the reference. See, you guys didn't immediately attack the aliens that were running at you, and it paid off. They were like, instead, you just, you know, got this pan-dimensional homing device thing, you know?
I know, right? This is my favorite part of the show last night, this Castlevania 3 thing. Okay, so you're going to take one of the canoes, all right. Oh, that's okay, Rogan. <laughs> that's okay, it was, everyone was along with you anyway. The boat handles well and is obviously very tough. You follow the river westwards, hardly having to paddle except to steer because of the strong current. Eventually, the river describes a wide arc to the south, and the sounds of approaching rapids become apparent. The current quickens. Do you wish to beach the craft and land on either the west bank or the east bank, or do you wish to shoot the rapids? What's it going to be? Do you want to shoot the rapids? Do you want to beat? So again, do you want to land on the west bank, the east bank, or shoot the rapids? No, nope. all it says, squeaky, is exactly that was. What's up, Garo? How are you doing, man? No, 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 it's not, no, that's not right. That's not right. So it's, yeah, it's West Bank, East Bank, or Shoot the Rapids. So can we redo? Can we redo that poll? There we go. Thank you. I totally would be Shoot the Rapids, too. I don't even know what's going to happen. I totally would do that. I'd be like, there's a canoe. I'm in it. Shoot those damn rapids. YOLO. I would totally be like YOLO strats. Incidentally, if it is true YOLO, then there are no YOLO strats, right? Like, by definition, you, strats would not fit with YOLO, right? I don't... I'm just saying. By the way, programming note, guys. Uh, 15 minutes from now is going to be my first break. And we'll have about a 10 or 15 break, minute break. Then we'll continue with this. While we're doing this, by the way, again, don't forget. Exclamation point donate. We're trying to do this to support the Damon Runyon Cancer Research Foundation. We've gotten $275 so far. If we get to $500, then we are going to be getting, thanks to the generosity of Mr. Wonders, a Witcher 3 game to give away. So keep that in mind. If we can get that money raised, um, we will have a Witcher 3 key to give away to chat so if you guys are able to contribute and be a part of this that would be lovely exclamation point donate will show you how exclamation point donated is if you want to announce that you've donated in which case we can give you your props and i'll add the number to the list if you want it to be an anonymous donation then simply send me a twitch pm and tell me how much you donated and i will adjust the total but i won't mention your name on chat it does but it's not letting you do it at the moment squeaky so Everyone wants to shoot it. Everyone wants to shoot it. Okay. Rocks appear out of the water and cliffs rise on both sides as you hurtle south. Ahead, the roar of white water increases. The boat is swept down through a series of water slides, small waterfalls, and jumbled rocks. Roll two dice, please, Lego. Roll two dice. Yeah, he's here. Sure he is. He just did the donate thing before. Eight. Okay, good. So you managed to hold control of your boat. Good job. Eventually the rapids end and you are carried down the center of a gigantic chasm. You are in the middle of a vast, still lake flanked by towering cliffs. Looking down into the water, you notice a metallic glint from a large, submerged shape. 
You dive down to investigate and are confronted by a small submarine, obviously in working order but currently unoccupied. A tug on your heel distracts you from your find, especially when you turn to see this. Let me show you your picture. You turn to see something. Let me show you guys the picture. Maybe it's a friendly tug. There we go. All right, this is what you see. I'm going to uh, capture it right now. What's up, Tom? We are fighting hair loss. All right, this is what you guys see. Oh, God damn it. All right, hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, man. Frustrating. I forgot that I can't... I can't click off the select window in the screen because then it's going to screw something up here. So I can't do that, which is annoying. So I have to go off there. And I have to go here. There we go. That's what you see. I'll let you guys contemplate that for just a minute. There we go. You had to say Kraken. That's a big can of nope. A tug on your heel distracts you from your find, especially when you turn to see that a house-sized octopod bivalve has a firm grip on your leg with one of its tentacles. It drags you towards its shell. And you must fight it. You must fight it underwater in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Skill 9, Stamina 8. Now the good news is that your blaster works underwater, and you have an Assault Blaster now. So you do actually have a shot at this, Lego. You do have a shot at this, guys. You do have the Assault Blaster. Now the blaster is going to help. You have a blaster. So what you guys are going to do, remember the way this works, is he's going to roll two dice. You're going to add it to your skill. But if you hit him, then you're going to roll a die to go from 1 to 6 to see how much damage you do. So first you have to roll to see if you hit. So it's a typical thing. I know, right? So, typical thing, two dice. It's hand to tentacle. I know. I wonder if anyone will ever look at tentacles again without being like, oh my god, mature reference. A five. Okay, 15, so he needs a six tie, a seven to beat. A six to tie. So he ties you. So no harm, no foul. All right. Roll that again. So now we have two dice again, Lego. <laughs> Here we go again. Here we go again. A six. So we've got a 16. He needs a uh, seven to tie to beat. He gets a seven, so again it's a tie. What's up, Polar? You guys are battling underneath the water. 
He's like, you're like, whoa, you're doing your 27 different forms of martial arts. All right, go ahead and roll again. So far, no damage on either side. Eight. All right, so he needs a nine to tie, a ten to beat. He gets a seven. All right, Lego, you hit him. So now you're going to roll one six-sided die, and whatever you get, that's the damage you do to him with your assault blaster. So now let's see how much damage you do. Let's get that six. I feel that six. Six! Wow, you strike him right in the eyes. Like, he goes, <laughs> he's a murloc. Wow, you freaking destroy him. So he's down to two points of stamina. He's like, all right, now the next round of combat, Lego, next round of combat. Now two dice again. <laughs> uh, this is where you aggroed more than you wanted, right? Yep. <laughs> 11. Holy cow, Lego is not messing around. Okay, 21. He needs a 12 to tie. He gets a 2. He's obviously too damaged. <clears throat> All right, Lego, now you roll damage. One or, All you need to do is get a 2 or higher, and he's dead. You were like so excited, you're like, you're like, sort of casually wave the gun at him. It's like, pew! All right, one more roll. You gotta do one more combat roll then. One more combat roll. <laughs> like, the, the guy was like with his tentacles, he's like this, and then he's like. Uh. All right, eight. So you need he needs a nine to tie, a ten to beat. He gets a six, and that means doesn't matter what you roll, he is going to be dead. Okay, you do kill it. That was funny though, but you do kill him. You dive. Well done, by the way. You dive down to the submarine and climb through the airlock. Safe. There is only one control for the submarine: an on-off switch set into the arm of a chair in the conning tower. You turn this to on. The submarine moves, gliding into a tunnel in the lake bed. The journey takes a while and allows you some much-needed rest. Restore four points to your stamina which means you're up to maximum. You can never go over your max, so. Um, eventually, you surface into a large room, half of which is a pool of water for the submarine, while the other half looks strangely like the interior of the Vandervecken, which is the ship that you guys were in before. Climbing from the conning tower into the dry half of the room, you see that there is only one exit. You go through it. By the way, you've been Rickrolled. What's up, Robin? Oh, is that the next video? It must be the next video. Uh. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, no. that's awesome. All right, so we got Ophelia or we've got Ham. Nope, nope, then nope. Then we will do. Uh, I need five out of we'll six. Get him on board. Um, also. Okay, I need five out of six so I can hear the rest of that. There we go. There we go. Oh, doing well, man. Doing well. Just having fun here. This is good. Okay, so uh, about five more minutes, then I'll take my 15-minute break. Behind the door is a path floating in midair at a precipitous height over a wide and distant countryside. It must be miles below you, yet it is still within the Vandervecken. 
The path, looking tenuous and unreassuring, flies arrow straight into the distance. You head across it, eventually arriving at a T-junction. By the way, I should probably save it here, now that I think of it. The path... I think you guys deserve a save point after all that. You head across it, eventually arriving at a T-junction. The path splits and flies off in two new directions, neither offering a visible end to the possibility of a fatal drop. Will you follow the path left or right? Left or right? Only by finding things that can replenish it, build. Ah, I love it. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. Let me Absolutely change this up. That. Yeah, you survived. <laughs> oh, man. That is so badass. Okay. Sorry, let me, uh, let me just switch out of that. Apologies. There you go. Okay. Yeah, I love I love that. They they did that originally at PAX East when they played there, so. There we go. Thanks, uh, Glock. They just treating Glockkeeper bot to be more helpful with my spelling. <laughs> Glockkeeper bot is like, what? Okay, so left or right? Left or right, folks? Tie. Okay, it's tied up. Four votes left, four votes for right. It went from people from Bug People Corpses to Space Squid. Sort of, Love Shack. There were some interesting situations going on. Alright, six votes for right, five votes for left. Alright. Alright, I'm going to close it in just a second. Last call, I'm going to close it in just one second. All right, I got a tie, people. I got six votes for left and six votes for right. I got a tie. I need someone to break this tie. Uh, Apple says left. All right. Uh, yes, I do realize game. Yes. Yes. All right, the results were left, and so let's do that. Actually, give me one second here. Let me just check something quickly. Bear with me just a moment. Uh, give me just a moment. Hold on. Okay, so going to the left. All right, challenge, go west. All right, perfect timing, guys. So you are going to be going left, and here's what we've got. The path flies straight for a long while before ending in another T-junction. 
Looking down, you can still see the alien countryside, while to the left and the right, the path hangs in the air, precipitous and unending. Which way will you turn, left or right? And that is where we're going to take our break. So we're going to be uh, taking our break. I'm going to be gone for 15 minutes. I'll be back at you at 5 o'clock, and we will continue with this. And hopefully, as I say, we will have a special guest at uh, 7 o'clock for music and then continue with this as well. But first, we have to see whether or not we can even, uh, you know, get any of this done as far as, uh, you know, getting through the rest of it. So um, I will catch you guys back here um in about 15 minutes please do not forget about the donation stuff that's obviously the most significant thing that we're doing right now so please don't forget about that um and uh let's make sure that we can get this done and we can continue to advance things forward i have to change that amount it's 275 now we can change this forward and continue to make strides towards challenging and eventually defeating cancer so let us support the damon running cancer research foundation exclamation point donate will make that happen and then when i get back i will take stock of the poll results and we'll go from there so while I'm gone, get up and stretch, go get a glass of water, get a drink, uh, get something to eat or whatever. And I'll be back at you guys in about um, 15 minutes from now. In the meantime, donate and hang tight. See you in a bit.
A small child was born His body was so healthy His mother's grasp was warm In happiness she raised him In silence he would sleep But innocence was fading In borrowed time she'd weep Time became a man With age it gained his freedom The confidence to stand But over time she weakened Well his mother's strength ran low The energy she gave him Was soon enough to go
Oh, yeah. Welcome back, everybody. That song's called The Gift, by the way. And um, ironically, actually, I didn't think about this till just now as I was about to come back on, but that song was actually written um, for my mother. Uh, and it's interesting that one of the reasons that I'm doing this uh, whole business is because of, you know, to sort of honor the memory of my mother who I lost to breast cancer. And so it's interesting. I don't know. It just struck me as interesting that this... This stuff uh, came up at the same time. But welcome back, everybody. It is good to see everyone again. As you can see, we are at $275. And I want to make another announcement as well. Um, and that is, let me pull up myself. There we go. I also have to adjust this. Um, I want to make the other announcement, which is uh, Mr. Wonders has already offered when we hit $500 um, to give a, a Witcher 3 game away, which is really awesome. But I want to mention that um, that's also going to be the case for when we hit every $100 mark from me, because we have lots of games here to give away. So when we hit $300, um, which is going to be coming soon because we're actually not at $250, we're at uh, $275. When we hit 300, I'm going to be doing a giveaway when that happens, um, and it will actually be a giveaway of an adventure title, um, thanks to Dragonspear, um, actually, since we're playing this as well. So that's going to be happening um, as well. So just keep that in mind, and if you want to know how to do that, exclamation point donate will make that happen. You can then do either exclamation point donated if you want us to know that you contributed, which is awesome, and I will add your money to the total. If you don't want to do that, and you want it to be just an anonymous donation, you can send me just a Twitch PM telling me that you've done that and I will immediately um, add it to the total. I will not mention your name, but I will add it to the overall total. So when we get to 300, then we are going to be uh, getting that giveaway, which should be good times. So let's uh, let's continue to move that forward. Witcher is at 500 <laughs> TNS. Uh, Witcher is at, you want the Witcher 1 to be at 300? No, we're going to give away an adventure game at 300. Uh, but uh, as I say, every $100 will have something and at 500 will be, thanks to Mr. Wonder's generosity, will be a copy of the Witcher 3. So, all right, uh, with that said, let us get back into uh, things and stuff. And let me just get my music, my other music back on. Okay, cool. There we go. I don't know what happened to my cover image. I don't know why that's not showing up. Oh, there it is. Now I got it back. Okay, we were on page 345. We had that. There you go, Shadow. That'll show you how to do it, and then uh, if you click on that DRF Donate, it'll bring you right to the page where you can do it. Okay, uh, let's see. So we have five votes for left, two votes for right, so it looks like we're going left here. Oh, I'm sorry. I promised to read this. Oh, you're making Witcher 3 pawn. Okay. Uh, I wanted. I promised to read this. So, the path flies straight for a long while before ending in another T-junction. Looking down, you can still see the alien countryside, while to the left and right, the path hangs in the air, precipitous and unending. Which way will you turn, left or right? So, that's the entry. Everyone who's already voted is good. If you haven't voted yet, feel free to do that. I'll just leave the poll open for another minute, and then we will get back into it. Um, and then again, programming note, uh, with all luck, I'm really hoping, but of course I can't guarantee, but I'm hoping that by the time we hit, um, uh, seven o'clock that we will be having a special musical guest as well. <clears throat> all right. I think everyone may have voted who wants to. And so the answer is... Oh, sorry, ghost. That's all right. You were going the same way everybody else was. So left. Left it is. All right. Left. You make good time. The path curves for a bit and then ends at a massive gray wall, which seems to extend down towards the alien countryside. Going through the door at the end of the path, you find yourself in what is obviously a security nexus. Two dome-headed guards, dressed in black with matching leather straps, boots, and holsters, are seated at a wide console, engrossed in a direct telecast from Epsilon Indy of Zero-G Fangball, which is showing on all ten security monitors in the room. The guards leap to their collective feet when they see you, shine the tops of their scalps, and take up assertive postures. Who are you? They ask suspiciously. Will you fight them? Attempt them, bluff them into thinking you are part of the ship's crew, or... Okay, yeah. So, will you fight them, attempt to bluff them into thinking you are part of the ship's crew, or will you use your pan-dimensional homing device? So, those are your choices. You can either fight them, bluff them into thinking you're part of the ship's crew, or use your pan-dimensional homing device. Uh, 
Oh, that's terrible, Wonders, really? Yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. Sorry about the chat delay. Uh, sorry about the delay. And that's, I'm sorry to hear that, Wonders. Yeah, it's, um, is a terrible disease that affects so many people. So, they are making progress with it, though. They are making progress, for sure, but still. So there you go. So your options are fight, bluff, or use the homing device. Choose 22, not an option. Let's see what we got. <laughs> Before using the homing device, we blast the planet with a gravity bomb. <laughs> it's the only way to be sure. You're kind of doing it from orbit. Okay, I'm going to close this pull down in just a minute. I'm gonna close this pull down in just a minute. <clears throat> I haven't. I've watched Kerbal Space Program a few times. Um, it's a little mathematically complex for me. I think it's a cool thing to watch other people do. Um, actually, Shatter Mage um, in here has played that a couple times, and also I watched Shabby Orange, um, who's been on here before. Um, I watched him play it. It's fun to watch, um, but for me playing it, I'm not really sure it's my thing. It's a little bit too much of the kind of space math stuff, which doesn't super interest me, but... Smoking, good God. Alright. Bluff. Okay, so you're going to attempt to bluff. Alright. They do not look very impressed, and being security guards, they are naturally suspicious. They aim their blasters and tell you to throw down your weapons. Will you throw down your weapons, or will you fight them? So there are your choices. Throw down your weapons or fight them. <coughs> Yeah, no, I've heard, I've, again, it's not a complaint with the game. I've heard a lot of good things, you know, from people about the game, but. So you're going to throw down your weapons or fight them? Want to fight? Fight me! Rask gonna say, a lot of people, you guys were like, listen, I'm not throwing down my damn weapons. <laughs> I just love how they're like, fight your weapons, and you're like, I am a ninja um, with 27 martial arts skills, and I just defeated a kraken underwater, so... As long as they're not squirrels. That seems pretty, pretty definitive. Homing device plus coffee break. All right, fight them it is. Okay, fight them it is. All right. Let's do it. Uh, now, is Lego back yet from his thing or not? Oh, Lego is here. Okay, cool, cool. All right, now, as you are standing in the cover of a doorway, you may throw a grenade in at them... However, as they have a console for cover, deduct one from the damage result of the blast. Thus, the grenade will do zero to five points of damage if you use one. So, you can throw a grenade at the guards, 
or you can just fight them straight up. So first of all, um, do you want to use a grenade or not? I don't think this needs a poll. Just you can just you guys can just tell me. Do you want to use the grenade or no? Grenade, yes or no? Okay, cool. Good, good. I'll, I'll take Kaboom as a yes. No, no, Kaboom. So that's no, 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 yes, yes, no. Save the nuke, no. Okay, so I have five no's to two yeses. Five no's to two yeses. Five no's to three yeses. Five no's to four yeses. We are one-fingered death punch artists. <laughs> Whoops. Alright, five no's, four yeses. So I'm going to guess that... I'm going to say Dark and Wolf is saying no as well. Fire everything! I love that part of that, that Star Trek. Fire everything! Okay, so Rogan says grenade. So we've got basically six no's, five yeses. Six no's, six yeses. Alright, so we've got six no's, six yeses. Six no's, six yeses. <laughs> Shields up. Not six noses. For his 27 martial arts. So we've got six noes, six yeses. Horrible killing spell. Six noes, six yeses. Six noes, six yeses. We need someone to break the tie. The question is whether or not to use a grenade on these guards. Um, the grenade is going to do a little less damage because they're hidden, but it, you know, it's a grenade. So, you know, you have two grenades. So the question is, do you use one of the grenades or do you save your grenades? So do you use the grenade or save it is the question. And right now we're tied. Six people say no, don't use it. Six people say yes, use it. There's no poll right now open because I didn't think I'd need one. Maybe I shouldn't have. So what does that mean, Apples? So Diddy says save, so don't use it. They are do not. They are not bulky figures. Okay, so there's sick. Yeah, I didn't open a poll for this one. Yes to grenade. Okay, so I believe if I counted that properly, I think that means that we're now tied 8 to 8. Eight people want to use it, eight people don't. I think we're tied, if I'm not mistaken. Eight people said yes, eight people said no, if I counted it all properly. So we're eight to eight. We are very conflicted in chat at the moment. Very conflicted. Ty goes to the runner, so no boom. Eight to eight. I need either somebody to change a vote, or I need someone else to jump in. Ah, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not the tiebreaker. Nope. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Wouldn't be fair. What's up, Shatter? Well, Shatter, the question is whether you use a grenade. You have two guards that are facing you that you're fighting. The question is whether you use a grenade on them or not. You have two grenades. If you use this one, you'd have one left. The question is, do you use the grenade or save the grenade, Shatter? That's the question. And right now, uh, eight people say you should use it. Eight people say you should not use it. Well, let Shatter answer first before you make your call, Apples. Let let Shatter do first. Like Shatter decide first. Okay, so Dragon and Apples each split, so we're still tied. So it's up to you, Shatter. It's all on you, Shatter. All right, everyone is split, so it's up to Shatter Mage. Everything rests on Shatter Mage. The future of your planet. 
is on Shatter Mage. No pressure, though. He's going with save it. All right. You guys are not going to use a grenade. They destroy you immediately. No, I'm just kidding. That doesn't happen. Uh, all right. Here we go. Okay. Saul Blast Electric Lash and two grenades. <laughs> we rehearsed this. Okay. So, uh, there we go. So, you've got six um, security. So, you got uh, the first security guard has got a skill of six. Second, they're both identical, basically. And they're going to be firing at you at the same time. So, they will get two chances to hit you. You'll only have the one chance to hit them. So, um, that's all right, though. You'll be, you know, still have a chance to do damage as time goes on. So, um, and you got your Assault Blaster. So, go ahead, Lego, and make your first roll. Uh, and we'll see whether you can take these guys down quickly. Hopefully your Assault Blaster will help. Okay, so five. So we're talking to 15. They need a nine to tie. 10 to beat, they get an A, an 8, so the first guy is hit, the second guy, oops, sorry, the second guy gets a 9, so the second guy ties you, which doesn't matter, the first guy you hit, so now go ahead and roll your damage on that first security guard, Lego, now you roll a, uh, now you roll one die, and, uh, whatever damage you get on that die is how much damage is done to the security guard, so if you get a 4, 5, or 6, you'll one-shot the first guard, um, otherwise you'll just damage him, so see how much damage you do on that first dude. See how much you damage you do on Tweedledum. No, it doesn't look like it wonders. I don't believe so. We're going to be uh, marathoning it with this. But we are going to have, hopefully, the special musical guest. Well, yeah, I guess you did two damage. <laughs> Listen, you'd rather have him rolling low on damage, but rolling high to hit than the opposite. You want to make sure he hits him first. Okay, second uh, combat roll. Second combat roll. As you spin back and forth between them, leaping left and right. Okay, 7. So you've got a 17, so he needs an 11 to tie, 12 to beat. He gets a 10, which is not enough. And the second one gets a 4, so both miss. All right, now you get to roll. Now you get to roll your six-sided die, Lego. Um, roll the six-sided die to see how much damage you do to the security guard. And then you'll just be fighting the one security guard. Three. Okay, you kill him. So you blast him. He's like... Oh, 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 oh. All right, and the security guard is dead. So now it's just you versus the second security guard. So go ahead and make your normal roll now. All right, one guard down, one to go. Eight. Okay, so that's, uh, let's see, an 18. He needs a 12 to tie. He does not get it anywhere close. All right, now you can roll your damage. Roll your damage. Four, five, or six, he's dead. Let's see if you can one-shot this guy. Six. Whoa! You strike him square in the head. Headshot is like poof. That's what he did. One shot. One shot. One kill. All right, down he goes. All right, nice job. Nice job. He is down. You took him out. Okay. 
The guards are vanquished, but a red light is flashing on the video controls. Perhaps somebody or something has been alerted. You had better hurry. The room has two exits. One is a security door, and the other is a simple manual sliding door. Will you go through the security door? You have the key for it, as I already said. Will you go through the security door, or will you go through the sliding door? Something more entertaining. Uh, sorry, Wonders. Most of my chat does find this entertaining. I'm sorry if you don't, man. But, no, nah, this is what we're going to be doing. This is one of my more steadily popular ones. If it's any consolation, when you're done with this, you're going to be moving on to Freeway Fighter. So, normally I do different kinds of ones as well. But this is, uh, I had mentioned this is a possibility weeks ago anyway. And so... And then I listed on the schedule and everything, so I'm sorry that we didn't have the board game thing going. That fell through, uh, as I said, but I mentioned that I rescheduled everything yesterday on that, so... Sorry. <laughs> this is the actual combat music. Okay, six uh, votes for the security door, one for the sliding door. All right. Here we go, here we go. Sephiroth is behind the door. Right, behind the door you hear... <laughs> right, Beljora? I was just thinking the same thing, like, oh my god. All right, uh, last call, last call in the poll, last call. Last call, last call. Yeah. Well, you know, if we ever hit $400 on my Patreon chatter, as you know, if we ever hit uh, that, then I'm going to be doing a D&D &D session every other month with viewers, a one-shot session with uh, viewers randomly chosen. So I will be doing that every other month um, if we hit the $400 level of Patreon. So that's a ways away, though, but could happen down the line. Okay, let's close that poll. Okay, security door. Outstanding. Alrighty. Okay. The exit leads you down a corridor and into a wide, circular room. And there's actually a picture with this, which I will show you guys right now. <clears throat> I will show you guys exactly what that looks like. I think I have a picture for this. You know, I was just wondering that. I, You know, the thing is that they say multiple times that this planet, that this ship is massive. So it's possible that this was just like a, you know, a massive, like, simulation or something. Like, like holodeck type thing. I, I wondered about that myself, actually. But I do not have an answer as to what that actually, whether that's actually the case. Hmm. Alright, looks like I do not have a picture for this, unfortunately. So I have to show you guys myself. The exit leads you down a corridor into a wide circular room whose floor space is almost completely taken up by a deep, still pool. Um, the only areas not covered with water are a path leading around the edge of the room and a very narrow bridge without handrails which passes over the middle of the pool. Both of these lead from where you stand to another opening on the other side of the room. Will you cross the room by taking the bridge or the path? And here's what it looks like. In fact, wait. I'll show it to you in larger screen. Hold on. It looks like this.
That's what it looks like. So you got the bridge across the center, or you got the stuff around the side? Oh, that's cool, Tinas. Okay. So that's what you've got. I <laughs> see the designers were no handrails. So bridge or path on the edge. Thanks, Clog. So what's it going to be? What's up, Orb Weaver? Looks like Pileus level 5. What's up, Shatter? Uh, Shatter, you're deciding whether or not there, you're in a room with a floor space taken up by a deep, still pool. The only area is not covered with water or a path leading around the edge of the room and a narrow bridge without handrails passing over the middle of the pool. It looks like this. So the question is whether you're going to go over the bridge or over the path. That's the question, Shatter. Bridge or path? Okay, five votes for the path, two votes for the bridge. I'm going to close this down in a minute. Get in your votes now. Oh, interesting, Beljora. Interesting. Path of Eternity, Pillars in Level 4. All right, six, four votes for the bridge, six votes for the path. It's actually a fairly close poll. I think people are a little bit uncertain here. That's my read. Oh. This is four, yes, sir. Four never shows up. It never shows up, four. Never happens. From uh, when I was playing Star Wars X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, and I was asking for reinforcements from my wingman, and I was like, you know, four, 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 and, and I kept, like, a spamming four, and they kept being like, this is four, yes, sir, I'm on my way, and they never showed up. I was just like, God damn, sorry. <laughs> That's funny, DNS. All right. We're going to close that poll. You guys decided to take the path on the edge. You're living on the edge? Okay. When you were about halfway around the pool, a series of ripples spreads across the face of the water. You hurry along, but notice to your horror the tentacles are rising out of the pool's edge, uh, rising out of the pool's edge and crawling like slimy green serpents towards you. Before you can run, you are surrounded. Out of the water rise this. And this I do have a picture for. Out of the water rises this. <laughs> out, of 
Out of the water rises bloated green bodies, ghastly yellow eyes glinting and hungry beaks clicking. Confronting you are two creatures which resemble both ma man and octopus. Will you fight them or... Hold on a second. Will you fight them or will you use your pan-dimensional homing device? I know, right? So will you fight them or will you use your pan-dimensional homing device? That's the choice. Fight them or pan-dimensional homing device? It's big love. That is not an option, unfortunately. And they go... Right? I think Coder 2 is pretty good. And I and I did actually like X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter. So you can either fight or you can use the super pan-dimensional homing device thing. Alright, looks like people are going to fight. That's what it looks like to me. Looks like we're talking about fight. Want to fight? Fight me! Okay. Now, and it's actually funny you mentioned that about the grenades, Glog, because what it says is, if you have a grenade, you may throw one into the pool. Do you wish to use a grenade here, chat? You wish to throw a grenade into the pool or not? So this one, like, uh, let, yeah, let me just see. Yeah, mm -hmm, yes, yes. Okay, there's the poll. So go ahead and choose. You can choose one for grenade yes or two for grenade no. I would point out, this is sort of like the shooting fish in a barrel. I mean, except that here it's a pool, uh, like a big pool on a big ship. And instead of fish, it's horrible, like octopus mutants. But otherwise... <laughs> well, no, the grenade would... No, in fairness, let me, let me just say, the grenade will hit them before it hits the water. I just want to say that. In case anyone's worried, the, it's going to hit them before it hits the water. I am going to say that. That doesn't mean you need to use it, but I'm just letting you know it's not just going to fizzle and go out when it goes in the water. It does hit it because they're above the water, so. That's true, actually. Fishing with dynamite. Yeah. Grenade yes, 10. Grenade no, 4 votes. Okay, I'd say that's pretty definitive. Okay. Alright, Lego, if you would please roll one die, and need, and I need to know if it's... Uh, it's tell me what the result is for rolling one die. Basically, I want to see if it's even or odd. Okay, it is even. Okay. One of the octopus creatures catches the grenade in mid-flight with a couple of its tentacles and holds it aloft. The grenade explodes. Roll the usual dice to see how much damage each creature takes, but in addition, as the blast was so close to you, deduct one point from your own armor. Okay, so you lose one armor point. That's not a big deal. But let's see about the damage. Now, the way the grenade works is... <clears throat> 
When you drop the grenade down, one die for each target and deduct the result for that target's stamina. Okay, so what you're going to do is, um, this is what you're fighting, and then you're going to roll, while I'm putting this up, Lego, please roll one die twice, and we need to see how much damage gets done right up. So you need to roll for each of them separately. There you go. Okay, so four and one. Wait, did you roll one? Okay, because you rolled four was even. Okay, so it was, um, so you rolled one. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> uh. One point of damage to each. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the grenade's like, boo! And the mutant's like, The, the mutant takes one tentacle, and it's like... <laughs> oh, God. Alright, well, here we go. Alright, you can fire away. No, you're only allowed to fire... You only had a chance to throw the one grenade in. You only had a chance to throw in the one grenade. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, you got one grenade left. You got one grenade left, but no, you're only allowed to use one grenade before they're on top of you. So now you have to you have to fire straight up. So let's do it. They're going to both attack you. You get to fire at them. You do have the assault blaster, don't forget. So they got that. Okay, so five. That means 15. First one needs a seven to tie and eight to beat. He gets a six, so he does not do it. The second one... Gets a six also, so they both miss. Now you get to roll one die to see how much damage you do, Lego, with your assault blaster. So both of them missed you, and the first one is going to get hit for damage. Yeah, I assumed opening fire was the next step. Somehow this music does not seem to fit this this uh, thing. Six. Six damage. Holy cow. You you practically kill it. It's like... Poof. Right. The, the grenade was just such a diversion. It's like, he's not... <laughs> it's like... <laughs> All right. So uh, now, second round. Five and six on grenades next time. I <laughs> know. Hey, Lick, at least he did it this time. All right. So he's down to one point and the other one. So now, second round of combat. Okay, four, so that means you got a 14, six to tie, seven to beat. The first one ties, and the second one clearly beats. So the second one um, hits you, and this one is not affected by armor, because it's not firing at you, so it does two points of damage. So you're down to 18 stamina. All right, and the first one tied you, so you didn't do any damage there. Okay, next round. No, I know. It was, was that what it was? It was like, bing! Like, oh. I didn't do any damage. Okay. All right, next round. Three. Thirteen, huh? We need a five to tie, six to beat. He gets a six. The first one hits you. The second one hits you. Alright, you take four points of damage there. 
I see some pep pills uh, in our future. I see using these high energy bars in our future. I see these high energy bars in our future, for sure. Okay, so let's try this again next round. Four. All right, first one gets a 10 and beats you. Second one gets a six, which ties you. So only the one hits this time. Those squids are getting the job done, man. Squids are not joking around. They're like... Oh, 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 oh. The guy was not happy that you obliterated him the first time. He was not pleased. All right, 12 stamina. You guys can still pull this out. You can still manage it. You guys can still get it done. Seven. That's more like it. All right, 17. Needs a nine to tie, 10 to beat. Does not get it. And the second one does not get it either. So, that first one you don't even have to roll for because it's going to die. So, that one is now dead. He slumps into the pool. And uh, that leads us to the second mutant. So, now, second, next round of combat. This time, we're just fighting the mutant straight up. So, you just got one mutant left. One mutant time. This music fits more with it, I think. Eleven. Wow. That is going to be difficult for it to overcome, and it does not. Okay, so you just you freaking destroy it combat wise. Now you have to see what damage you get. So go ahead and roll that six sided. Let's see what we get on the second mutant. Yeah, eleven is awfully good. That's a good combat. So now he's rolling to see the damage he does, and he one-shots him. Poof! The second mutant hits the ground, hits the water, and uh, the bodies of the creatures float gently on the surface of the pool as you rush to the exit. Now, at this point, can I make a suggestion, guys? Since you were at 12 stamina, do you guys want to have your high-energy bar... Because you have pep pills still, but that they take the same amount, they restore the same amount of stamina as this does. Can I recommend that you eat your high energy bar so you go back up to 17 stamina? Can I make that recommendation that you eat the high energy bar? Just tell me in chat if you want to eat it or not. Because that way it would get you back up to 17 stamina. Okay. That's fine, Mr. Wonders. Have a good day. Thanks for stopping by anyway. So it's up to you. Set. What do you want to do, guys? Bars, yes, bars, no. <clears throat> hey, it looks like people are going on the bar side. Yeah, okay. That's what I would have thought too. Okay, so everyone wanted to have it. That makes sense. So the high energy bar is gone, but you have restored your stamina. You're now up to 17 stamina. Lovely. Okay. Uh, and I think that brings us back up to let's see, 373. Okay. And we're going to give ourselves the save point also. There we go. Save point. Good. Okay. Through the opening is a chamber occupied by this. I'll show you guys what it looks like. It does not look like that. In case. Alright, this is what it looks like. And the nearest uh, that I can describe it from the picture, as you'll see in just a moment, is it looks a little bit like... Ah, shoot. I hate doing that. Should not make that difference. Okay.
Ugh, are you kidding me? Sorry, this is not like capturing photo bucket images very much. It's always like, wait, what? What do you want me to do? Why do you want me to do this? So it's always a little bit frustrating. Okay. And this. Here we go. He looks to me like a space orc. That's basically what I would describe him as. But the book describes him as a brutish-looking extraterrestrial draped in large sheets of armor plate and toting a whopping great disintegrator aimed at you. In the wall behind this unfriendly being are three large circular doors. Stop, it says, peering at you with a pair of close-set beady eyes. To pass, you must answer my question, if you think you are intelligent enough. Will you attempt to answer the creature's as-yet-unasked question? Will you... Hold on a second here. Uh, will you use your pan-dimensional homing device or forget about niceties and just blast it? So your choices are answer the creature's question, uh, use your pan-dimensional homing device, or just blast it. Right, Glog? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, like Warhammer 40k Space Orc. What is your favorite color? Red, no blue. Ah! You don't actually know, Beljora. All you know is what it says on the tin. And it says, pan-dimensional homing device. That's what it says. Pretty much, yeah. I, nobody knows what it does, though, because you haven't used it. So... Yeah, didn't I say brutish? Brutish, didn't I say that? Oh, not British. <laughs> you see someone's British. Hello, would you answer my question, please? No, <laughs> I didn't say British. <laughs> Tally-ho. All right, nine votes for yes uh, answers questions. All right, that's pretty obvious. The will of chat is pretty obvious. Okay, now pay close attention to this one because this actually requires... Uh, this requires some letters. What's the question, you ask? This, answers the alien. What is the next letter in the following sequence? O-T-T-F-F-S-S-E. So, let me show you what that means. Let me show you what that means. This is what it actually looks like on the page. That's what it looks like. So he wants to know what the next letter in the sequence is. Now, the number, what it says is, when you decide what the next letter in the sequence should be, you determine the number of that letter. A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, D is 4, and so on, all the way up the alphabet. Multiply that number by 10, and that's the number I should turn to. So in other words, when you decide what the next letter in the sequence should be, you determine the number of the letter. Again, A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, D is 4, etc., Multiply it by 10, and that's the number that I should turn to. So, what do you think that is? O-T-T-F-F-S-S-E. What's the next letter? And if you answered N, explain why. Just tell people why it's N. 
If it's N, then Y. And then you have to figure out what that corresponds to also. Ah, N equals 9. Okay. Well, then let's see. 9 would be... Oh, so... You, okay. So you think it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and N equals 9? I got you. Okay. Yep. That would make sense. So then N equals 9. So if that's true, then what, what number is that for N? So what would that be? So N would be what number? So O is 1... So uh, A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, D is 4, E is 5, F is 6, G is 7, H is 8, uh, I is 9, J is 10, K is 11, uh, L 12, M 13, and 14. So it would be 140. So that would be 140. So should I be turning to 140 if I calculated that right? And you multiply times 10, remember. So let me know, does that sound right, 140? Because you multiply it by 10, Diddy. One forty, yeah. All right, let's see if you're right. The answer is, of course, the letter N. Correct, says the extraterrestrial. You may pass. Good job, guys. You got it right. So, which door will you go through? Will you go through the right door, the center door, which, for those of you keeping score at home, is spelled in this book C-E-N-T-R-E, -E, because apparently British, or left? So, right door, center door, or left door? Right, left, or center? Because British. Because symmetry. Hey, what's up, L? How you doing, L? I learned from Skyrim to choose the middle option. Wow, that is definitive right there. Alright, center it is. Okay, folks. After a short walk down a corridor, you find yourself in a room that looks like this. Let's see if I can find that. Bear with me, I'm just finding it. There it is. I got it. Now we're going to capture it. Okay, this is what you see. What's up, Matt? What's going on, man? Good to see you, dude. 
Uh, okay, yeah, that's, yeah, please do, Glog. Thanks, man. After a short walk down a corridor, you find yourself in a room occupied solely by 70 or 80 floating black spheres. So black that they look like holes in the air. They drift about the room in a lazy circular motion, touching nothing. On the other side of the room, through the spheres, you can see a door. Will you ignore the spheres and walk straight through the middle of the room to the other door? Try to reach the other side by dodging past the spheres. And then it says in parentheses, this looks like it will be difficult. Go back and take the left door or go back and take the right door. So ignore the spheres, walk straight through the middle of the room to the other door. Try to reach the other side by dodging past the spheres. Go back to the room you just came from and take the left door or go back and take the right door. What's up, Atlas? Be bold. Crumb. So, actually, uh, yeah, wait till the uh, poll comes up. 